All right, we're here. We'll play a little music. Just uh, relaxing a little bit, getting warmed up for you guys. Can't just, you know, you can't just stick it in. Okay. <laughs> you just did. I mean, you can't. I Unless wish you hadn't. <laughs> I'm I'm really just resisting the urge to make a, a that's what she said joke because I would appreciate that. Yeah, I would advise against that I would to myself. That, yeah. As your fictional lawyer. But I just want to say it was there and I saw the opportunity. You're a better person for it. I'm glad you called attention so everybody knows how good of a person you yeah, are. Yeah, I just of, because of what you didn't say. You know what? That's real <laughs> virtue signaling right there. That's really what that is. Topical. Yeah, well, look at me go. Go yeah. for it. Um, we do newsworthy things. Oh, I just topical meant, things. I meant more with the, this is a current uh, events podcast. Movies are current and yeah, they're events. Say, that, oh, we do it. Yeah, we do it week to week. Yeah, that seems current enough. Yeah, yeah, very topical current. Topical to the movies. Yeah, that we're discussing. Well, if we want to talk about current events, Nolan, how'd you end up getting monkeypox? Um, going to the movies. Weirdly yeah. Enough. Yeah, going a lot, going too much for this podcast. Yeah, you know, we put it you hurts. in harm's way, but uh, as you probably expected, there's no sort of workers' comp or health insurance benefits. We, I, I, yeah, I know. But see, I've been having different symptoms. They're weird. So I've been growing a lot of hair. And really? A lot of hair all over. Yeah. And also my fingernails getting real sharp. And I also have a weird urge to... Engage in an exploding fist bump with pretty much every person I meet. It's replaced handshake for me. Yeah. I don't know, as a natural instinct. Yeah. Do you often find yourself waking up from a blackout wearing a birthday hat covered in blood? Yes, but that's not new. (laughs) So I'm not going to blame the monkeypox for that. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's getting pretty serious. I mean, the zoos are overflowing. I know. I look okay for now. For now. Okay. We'll get you a banana later. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a... I can't do it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live! Fuck it! I can go and write it, and we'll do it live! We'll do it live! Fucking thing sucks! And five, four, three. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very 32nd episode of Fuck It. We're doing it live. As always, this is a live podcast, unless you're listening to the recording. So, you, that's you in the audience, you can and should participate. If you want to. Uh, call us directly. You can reach us at 713-367-1534. That's 713-367-1534. That number will be in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen for the whole episode. So if you've got something to say, just call in. If you want to listen live next week, you can find us on Twitch at Doing It Live Pod every Tuesday night at 11 p.m. Central Time. That's 12 a.m. Eastern, 11 Central, 10 Mountain, 9 Pacific, and 4 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Nolan is back this week to talk about a movie that I was very, very excited for, and he was not. That's Bodies, 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 Triple B, as the real fans call it. As well as one of the most heavily promoted movies of the year, of course, that's Bullet Train, as you probably know now that it's been driven into your skull for, what, six, seven months now? Has it been that long? It's been a while. Okay. And tonight, we're going to be playing Bullet Trivia. What else? I'm going to ask you three questions about those hot pieces of lead that pierce bodies around the world and make violence sound weirdly sexual. If you can answer all three of those questions right, you could win the contents of tonight's swear jar. That's right. Every time I curse, 25 cents in the jar for you to win. We're up to 51 quarters. That is... $12.75. $12.75. That took a little bit, but that number only goes up. I've got a great show for you tonight. I'm drinking water because I already had a margarita and the sugar really gives me a hangover, so I'm just trying to get ahead of that. We're just getting started here. 
no ads tonight because, you know, I only sell out most of the time. We're going to go straight into movie talk here. We're talking about bodies, bodies, bodies. Now, I'm a big slasher movie guy. I didn't used to be. Scream changed me. When, As, did, you, when did you see Scream? I don't even remember the first time I saw Scream. But... Uh, it was certainly after Get Out, mm-hmm. I would say. Because Get Out, I think, was the last movie I remember you being like truly, genuinely terrified of. Get Out was scary. Of course okay, it was. you were talking to that screen like it was, you know, yeah, a comforting blanket, and I wanted to kill you. Um, Get Out's an intense movie, so what I'm can saying, I say? You know, I'm supporting you. Yeah, more well, recently. Scream, Scream really changed me. Turned me on to the whole slasher genre, especially the more self-aware ones. And I'd say Bodies, Bodies, Bodies definitely falls into that category. So, for a little background, it's based on a short story by Kristen Rupinian, who also wrote the short story Cat People, or not Cat People. Nolan wishes she wrote the short story Cat People. She wrote Cat Person, famous New Yorker story that you may have read in your liberal arts college creative writing classes, like I did in two of them. And she really, at this point, has kind of been held up as like the literary voice of Gen Z and the online age and all this stuff, which if you've read Cat People, you'll know what I mean. It's about a college girl dating online and, you know, whatever. Or Cat Person, again, sorry. My heart wants it to be Cat People, too. Mine, too. But she wrote this short story bodies 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 which was adapted into a film by the screenwriter sarah delappy or delap it's d-e-l-a-p-p-e if anybody knows and directed and that's a first time screenwriter i believe and i think first time screenwriter but what is a playwright she wrote the i believe the play wolves which was about a teenage soccer team uh girl soccer team so i think that there might be some thematic or familiar ground um, correct me if I'm wrong now. And directed by Helena Rain, who is a Dutch director, making her American debut. Second movie, I believe. Second movie in general, and her American debut with Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Now, this is a movie that I was excited for. We've been seeing trailers for it since we saw Scream 5 back in February, I believe. Right. That was the first time I remember seeing the trailer, and I remember being like, Oh my god, yes. This is gonna be amazing. And I turned to Nolan, and I was like, that movie is gonna fucking rock. And he had the exact opposite reaction, and I was honestly shocked. So, Nolan, why were you such a hater? Um, I think just in terms of, if you look at the marketing, just judging the film based on the marketing, which is the only material I have to go on, up until that point, are they trying to sell it to me as an audience member? Yes. Using what? Okay. So the things that they elected to use were clips that I were that are supposed to be funny, but Hilarious. I did not find funny because of just the nature of the that I thought that that sense of humor was based solely on the buzzwordiness of basically every line, especially within the trailer, um, and it also seemed like. Because of that, a criticism of, or a satire of Gen Z, Which it definitely is. Which it definitely is, but done in a way that I just didn't think I was going to particularly enjoy. And that is what I was gathering from the pre-material. Well, what I was gathering from the pre-material was a really, really funny slasher comedy about Gen Z... And I recognize the buzzwordiness as, like, them just trying to capture what the satire is about in a very short amount of time, which I think they did pretty well. Oh, I mean, yeah, I, in terms of, it does act, I mean, all of the pre-material, it, or all of the advertising and whatnot, it all does accurately portray the movie. However... Having seen the movie, there's definitely a few things that are... I can see why they'd be left out of a trailer, but of more interest to me. Two particular characters, um, in fact. Um, Maria Balakova, who plays B. B. Um, and Lee Pace, who plays Greg. Uh, because once you see the movie, uh, you know, not to, you know, 
presage the setup or anything like that. Once you see the movie, it's pretty clear that they wouldn't might like wouldn't function in a trailer in quite the same way, in quite the same attention grabbing way. Also, this movie has Pete Davidson in it. Well, okay. Now, on the subject of Pete Davidson, because this is a controversial subject, and I completely understand that. Okay. Let me be perfectly crystal clear. I do not like Pete Davidson's stand up. I did not like him in 90% of the stuff he was in on SNL. However, I think he has the capacity to be funny, and he's been funny at times, like really very quite funny. I just don't think he's been used correctly, and I don't really know if people have really figured out how to use him correctly. Like, because I don't think he's a very good stand up. He's not good in most sketches, but like he has some really funny weekend update bits. He. It's been really funny in, for example, this movie, where he essentially just plays himself. Okay. Well, do you want to continue further with the discussion of Pete Davidson, or do you want to get the setup of the movie? I can, I have a further note on Pete, but it, it fits in, too. So. All right. Yeah. We'll just go ahead. So, sure. basically, the setup of this movie, which I called going in almost beat for beat. True. Uh, I, I thought it was going to be some girl and her roommate. It was some girl and her girlfriend. And they were going on a road trip through scenic forest, started very calm and intimate, big makeout scene, whatever. And uh, basically, they're going to meet one of the girl's friends. So one of the girls is, I believe, Dutch or Russian, and is going to visit her girlfriend, who I guess she met in New York City or something. Something. Met at rehab or whatever. And her girlfriend is very, very, very wealthy. And they're going to her friend's place for a hurricane party which is basically where they all just get super fucked up and hang out for a few days with nobody bothering them yeah then so they get there and it's immediately awkward there's a lot of tension this girlfriend apparently hasn't seen a few of these people in a while but so there's really honestly i really bought into the friend group dynamic stuff i thought that was one of the stronger parts of the movie uh but essentially they get really wasted and they decide to play this game bodies 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 which is basically like a version of mafia or in a very gen z term among us uh which i hate to say it but the comparison cannot be avoided essentially you draw note cards out of a hat one of the note cards has an x on it that person is the killer you turn off all the lights and everybody crawls around and the killer walks up on people pokes them in the back and they have to lay down dead and then once they do that somebody finds their body yells bodies 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 turn all the lights on try to figure out who the killer is and either execute somebody or don't then turn the lights off rinse and repeat yeah that's the setup and it goes sideways of course yeah as all things do yeah that's basically it right we can yeah okay so what's your pete davidson point here pete davidson point is pete davidson plays the owner of the house or the guy whose parents own the house right so you said he's essentially playing himself right that's an interesting thing because he's a guy who's essentially famous for being i think especially i mean if demonstrated by this movie remarkably unlikable um and in in a, like a post-ironic like i'm an un- i'm unlikable i'm a douchebag i'm a shitbag and I'm failing to see the charm in that approach. That's fair. That's clearly a, a personal take because I saw him live and I saw the effect that he had over a mass of people, probably 15 to 17,000. Did 17, he kill? He killed. And he did. And it was weird <laughs> and, and felt a lot improv. Um, but that's where I heard it. And I'm quote, nah, it's okay, guys. I'm a piece of shit. Uh, well, I mean, that's kind of his vibe. Okay, cool. I get that. Accurate. If that's the case. So, and that character, I mean, all the characters in this movie are kind of like that. Yes. Um, I would say all of the characters except for B and Greg. Greg, Greg. to a certain degree. But B, B specifically. She is very clearly supposed to be, I think, very clearly supposed to be like the audience person in yeah. the group of the satirists. I will say that was probably my group. like least favorite aspect because that's just such an overused trope. Is like bringing in the outsider. Yeah, 
And not, I mean, not only that, it's like, okay, that's the case. I, by design, hated all of these characters so much that I wanted to cling on to her. However, the movie treats her like everybody else, not in the same way that, I mean, in like a, it's kind of a over, you know, a very specific satirical way, but more she's cast on with suspicion and therefore I lost the person I actually wanted to see progress through the movie um, pretty, pretty quickly. Um, well, I just think they didn't do a whole lot to really endear her to us. It was more just like, wow, look at how much worse these other people it was are. In, it was an endearment by default. Yeah. That was the thing. And I was like, okay, exactly. So then they don't utilize the in that they gave you know, me into this movie. Um, and See, that, on the one hand, on the quickly. one hand, yeah. I agree with you. On the other hand, it's satire, and so I don't think you need to like anybody necessarily because she is still like, you know... The like she's still a character that's being like sent up like a Gen Z stereotype. She's like the shy girl, the codependent girl. Like yeah, you know. Yeah, no, I get you. Cause she, yeah. she scrolls on her phone just as much as the rest of them. Uh, yeah, I know, I get it. She calls her mom. You know, yeah, yeah. big relationship with her mom. Yeah, I get it. I get, I get, understand she's a part of it. But this movie also, in terms of satire, you can use her as a, as an example. You can use any of the other ones as an example too. Um. They give up developing the satire at about the same time that all this happens. It starts out like one. It is like you know, like a drug or getting drunk in this movie. It's pretty fun for the first third because the setup's happening. It's all kind of ooh, what's gonna happen? But then as you realize what is happening, it 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 drops off. And because because you lose the tension, you're stuck with these characters who by design are vapid and shallow. Okay, at what point did you lose the tension? Because one of the things that I enjoyed most about this movie was the mystery and the tension. Like, did you have any idea at any point who the killer was? Here's what I was pretty... Here's what... uh, To the point... You had theories. I had theories at times. The movie clearly was presenting you with theories, but there were so many twists and turns and just curveballs thrown in there and so much uncertainty and paranoia that... I mean, I thought that was the strongest element of the movie. Maybe I think it, it it. Besides the satire, I don't I don't want to give away a spoiler or anything like that. But let's say the sleep mask scene that in was the so gym, funny. That that is, was incredible. After that, the movie goes off of a cliff. Uh, I disagree. Okay, I understand that. But the thing is, again, if I didn't, if I wasn't falling back on, we still anybody, don't know who the killer is after that. Yeah, I know, but... So where's well, how is the tension gone? People still die. You're asking about, because I'm still with these people, think about the content of that scene. Think about what the character ramifications of that scene would be, and then think about what the movie does with them. Right. So, it doesn't... It doesn't yeah. Yeah, it doesn't quite... That is a missed opportunity. Yeah, it doesn't live up to its potential, for sure. Um... But I feel like I'm also being... I mean, there were... There were I mean, there was... Yeah, certain things I liked about it, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, excuse me. I thought it was, I thought it was, things, I thought it was well-directed things. outside of, like, certain like, kind of creative decisions. Um, but, like, generally well-directed. Um, it is consistent to its tone, which is impressive. Rachel uh, Sennett was excellent, I thought. She's one of the four characters in the movie that are all written the same. I'm sorry. I they yeah. They're not written the same though. They're they're written to be they they're friends. So of course they're similar. I but mean, they are all like different archetypes that are being sent up. I guess. I mean, sure. Uh I didn't I didn't feel particularly not even attached. I just wasn't interested. Um and I, yeah, I'm I'm criticizing this movie as that's a consequence for, for for losing my interest because because in terms of the mystery element, this is why I would say that I I, I gave up because it essentially becomes one big argument for the remaining runtime. Yeah, that just never ends. Yeah. 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 Okay. You're seeing it as positive. I'm seeing it as a negative. I'm clearly, right? Yeah, but I mean, the movie is, like, 
creating that sense of paranoia and they're all turning on each other not and that's i mean that's what the back half of the movie is but it's emblematic of the whole thing about it which is just it is just kind of like so what is the criticism because it's they whine in circles yeah 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 um for hours and hours and hours or, yep. or whatever um ultimately resolving in not a whole lot and that's the criticism right no because that's how i feel <laughs> See, on the one hand, like, it, okay, looking at this movie through a horror lens, I see that. <laughs> looking at this movie through a satirical lens, I think that's really the structure. And the horror is just a byproduct. It's done excellently, but the structure of it is pitting them all against each other, like, pointing out their weaknesses and, like, the, the traits that they're sending up. And just exploiting those to shit. And it's more about that than it is about the horror or even the mystery, as much as I really like the mystery. Fair. And I would, I, I would agree with you um, on, on those points. However, in addition, I would just say that the things that it's... The thing that's comics on, I just felt that they ran... They ran basically out of things to comment on that weren't in the specific style of like okay it's like oh my god stop gaslighting me oh my god okay those were funny oh see i don't think that that's funny because no because they call it out that's they call it out they're you literally like i could feel you getting just like a validation boner next to me when like they finish that gaslighting scene they got one thing right in this movie and that was it by the way gaslighting is is bullshit and overused fair enough I, I agree. Everything else, just because you, this is what I'm saying, just because you mention a buzzword or reference it in a specific, in a certain kind of way. Just, For context, Nolan is a serial gaslighter. Okay, well, hold on. I'm just going to make it a general point, and also you're crazy. Um, um, just because you mention something in a referential way does not make the reference itself funny. Um, and yes, that, but so the, it is felt, funny. This movie felt like it, and I understand that people will like it and respond to that. However, I think also general audience opinion, if you can base it on certain things, it's not been like particularly great. Um, and it, anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um, I think it had potential based on its setup and based on its first 30 minutes or so and i think it kind of squanders it well i thoroughly enjoyed this movie it's one of the best that i've seen this year there you go yep oh also quick shout out to disaster piece for the score i gotta say also it's not my favorite of yours buddy um marcel wow. your your 824's house guy your marcel this year was spectacular though he did the same guy to same guy. Marcel the Shell He did score. Marcel. He did that. He did, oh my god, he's done so much A24 stuff. Um, wow. Yeah. It Follows, famously. Maybe that's actually all of it, but still. Powerhouse. Yeah. He's great. Jeez. We love you, Disaster Piece. All right, well, we already talked about Bullet Train, so it's time <laughs> to go on to Resurrection. <laughs> that was quick. I was trying to gaslight you. Yeah. Let's talk about Bullet Train. Okay. Uh, Bullet Train. It's smoke and aces too on a train. Um, Essentially. So a bunch of assassins get onto a train with Brad Pitt, who's allegedly not an assassin because he's trying to reevaluate. Snatch and grab guy. He's a snatch and grab guy because he's trying to reevaluate his life. Very clearly at one point or many points was an assassin. Um, and Tokyo Underworld, It's it's got like a kingsman-esque style of humor every person that's in it is a cameo um action quips trains lots of them bullets and a couple bullets that's bullet train yeah basically i mean i didn't know what to expect coming into this in terms of quality i was thinking it was either gonna be fun but not great to terrible at the worst case. Mm-hmm. 
And I'd say definitely fell more toward the latter. Okay. How, how close I, did it, though? Pretty awful. Pretty awful. And I, you know, it's disappointing because it's not a franchise. Love to see that. Love to see, like, an action comedy with actual movie stars and a decently high budget getting made. Love that. Why does it have to be this one? You know? It's just weirdly cute and pretentious in the worst ways and the dialogue is trying to be very tarantino i mean it literally has john john travolta and samuel l jackson but it's brian oh, tyree yeah. henry oh, yeah. and uh what's that guy's name aaron taylor johnson and aaron taylor johnson yeah they're literally just what are the guys' names in Pulp Fiction? And, uh, they're oh my god, I can't remember. And, uh, Julius and yeah, Julius and, and uh, oh shit. Come uh, on, this is Ray, embarrassing. Right? No, uh, this is bad. Isn't he related to somebody? I don't know. Uh, it's Julius and John Travolta. Not Vic. No. No. Regardless. Whatever. It's literally those guys, but it's Brian Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson. Named Lemon and Tangerine. Named Lemon and Tangerine, and they're, you know, supposed to be twins, and nobody believes it, because, you know, they're different races. Crazy. Um, yeah, that could never happen, no. Of course not. Uh, but... I mean... Right? It could happen. Twins? It could happen. I mean, by, like, the scientific definition? It could happen. Could that happen? It could happen. Alright. Two different moms, same night. That doesn't count. They're born at the same time to one of the same parents. That's a twin. Are they not twins? I don't think so. Okay. We're getting into some rough waters here. Are we? Okay, sorry. <laughs> no. I mean, I'm just saying, like, this is actually an interesting question. Like, yeah. So, if you father one child with one woman and another child with another woman, and they're born on the same day, are those kids twins? Somebody call in. I mean, yeah, I'd I need, love to go to the phone on that know. one. I, 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 don't, I don't think so, because I would think by, like, a science... I don't know. I would assume by a scientific definition that it would terms, it would determine it's about where it's, where you're coming from, you know? Not where you're... <laughs> Not where you're going. Not where you're going. Yeah, yeah. And that's just... That's what I would assume. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I that... that question got that's an interesting question i would like to actually get a definitive answer but i don't think we're qualified we're definitely not but there's john travolta and samuel l jackson in the forms of aaron taylor johnson and brian tyree henry Mm -hmm. as lemon and tangerine two assassins there's is it zazie beats playing is it oh i yeah. believe so yeah that's right. beats bad bunny, bad bunny who is legitimately maybe the second or third best actor in this movie like in terms of performances, not in terms of career work. Although there remains to be seen. I have high hopes for you, Mr. Bad Bunny. And it's just kind of a cameo fest, as Nolan said, of assassins fighting each other, killing each other. For all types of different reasons, they all ended up on the same train. And of course, it all leads back. I mean, uh, I'm not going to spoil Don't it. Don't spoil who it is. But yeah, spoil, I cannot it, spoil who it, it is. Everybody but, has, this, has these Guy Ritchie-esque... Uh, title cards and title names oh. and code names. For example, um, Brad Pitt's is Ladybug for thematic reasons. Um, and everybody refers to this big, bad Russian... White Fang or something? The White Death. All the white three death. words. The White Death every time. And there's, they'll be like, they're dropping this name like he's Bob. You know, like they're just being like, oh, and so the White Death was this. The White Death did that? That's the White Death. That's crazy. Yeah. No, de- no TWD, no nothing. Yeah. No, no nicknames. He's no. too official for that. But essentially, he's like Kaiser Soze, bringing them all together. Everybody has ties back to the White Death on the train. And, of course, you know, since it's a two and a half hour, one location movie, they have to have a lot of flashbacks to fill that time. And there are just far too many. And we see the same ones of couple times in some instances and everybody has a wacky backstory crazy stuff that happened to get them on the train and i just had very little interest in that in any of that that is entirely fair my review is it's fine um and that's pretty much the end of it 
it's uh, it's watchable. It's too long. It's it's not funny um, because of because it overquips by at least half. Like you know, it, it's just like you know, you kind of want like, all right, you didn't need to fire back on that one, man. Like you didn't. I don't think so. Um, it's full of that. It's got a you know, a, it's got a crazy plot that you've actually seen a hundred times, which is really kind of weird. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was a Sunday afternooner. Like it was, I felt I felt comfortable in there. Kind of like a little hazy, like a, a touch sleepy. Because I'm not like I'm not gonna miss much if if I do drift for like a second. Um, yeah. I just I just don't see how that's possible. It was it. It wasn't pulling teeth. It wasn't excruciating or anything. I just, I just don't even see how you can say that. You said it wasn't... So this is ostensibly an action comedy. Yeah. Now, you said it wasn't funny. Yeah. Now, was the action any good? Not really. So. What the hell? But, like, you know, some more than parts. I watched it all, and I was just like, that was... Yeah, that was a movie. Mm. It, was, it was, it was like... Yeah, it was like popcorn. I don't know. It's like a little salty, but not much. It's not really that filling. I just it's thought not really it was... that satisfying, which is why you keep eating it. Here's the thing: is <laughs> the action in this movie was so underwhelming. I mean, it is all close quarters, hand to hand combat on a train, which like duh. And there are a few moments where you see the potential because this is like this guy directed like Deadpool two. He's like Brad Pitt's longtime stuntman or stunt coordinator or whatever. And so I was expecting to see some stunts. And really, like, the only funny parts are when, like, people get cut in half. Or, like... Rare. Yeah. Any, funny deaths, yeah. Exactly. Like, there are very few funny deaths. And there are a few... There are more than a few attempts, but most of them don't really land. It, but I was surprised by the lack of attempts and the amount of just normal, like, oh, he's dead, move on, deaths. There's a whole... There's a lot of talking. Yeah, and a there's lot. so much talking. So much talking. A lot. And they don't even... What are, nothing that they say matters. You figure out exactly what's going on, like, halfway through the movie, and then they just keep talking about nothing. Yes. I agree. So, I don't understand how you can say it's fine. I did not have a good time. I mean, I didn't have a great time, but I, I don't know. It was... I, it was a lukewarm glass of water. Like it was just like it was there, it was on. There was not much else out. It was fine. Would have been great on TV too, or fine. Would have been fine on TV. Jacqueline, on Jacqueline has two questions. Did we like Joey King's British accent? No. no. She looks like Lord Farquaad. <laughs> Second question: Was it a movie you wouldn't feel bad going to the restroom during? Absolutely. Uh, I don't know. It's like it when you're in there, you feel like you're gonna miss like because I didn't want to miss the rare moments of action when they occurred because it was mostly just talking. But then like randomly something would pop off and like you know thirty seventy odds that it'll be cool, and I wouldn't want to miss that necessarily. It's a risk. Yeah. You're taking a risk. Sure, do, uh, go for it. Don't do it. No. Hold it. Pee your pants if, if you have to. Real men wear diapers to right. movies. Yeah. Because they're committed. Yeah. Yeah. No. Lawrence Arabia? That's, that's I didn't, Kino. I didn't even get up. Yeah. <laughs> no intermissions for me. No, fuck no. I'm, I'm a just, big boy. I'm keeping my seat. Hell no. Yeah. Well. It's warmer that way. That's really all I have to say about Bullet Train. Oh, well, the look of this, like the production design and everything was cool, but it was like... I don't shiny. know. It was shiny. It was also like weird, shiny. like fetishizing Japan action movie kind of vibe, which like is fine. But I think they overdid it a tiny bit. Yeah, it's zany, a little too zany by a half. Yeah. But also not, not exactly. It's like studio zany. Um, yeah. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So that's studio full zany is a good way to put it. Studio Although zany, no, I will yeah. say this movie was a lot weirder than I was expecting. Me too. For sure. That's that's the other thing. But not like in like a way that really sustains itself. Just, no. But it is. Just very, very strange. strange. And and did have one all time like laugh. Not worth the runtime, but because what of what joke? The white bath. 
Oh yeah, yeah. No, that honestly no, very worth genuine. the worth the runtime. Genuine, like <laughs> that, I, was, that was that was incredible. That was very very funny, and I that just, was that was spectacular. Yeah, because I was just the whole time going, "Who is it? Who is it?" Don't look it up, by the way. Don't look it up. Oh yeah, absolutely hysterical. Um, there you go. So that's positive. I I'll guess. End on that note. I guess, but I here's my question: If you can only see one of these movies, BBB or BT? Just as a general response? Yes. Bullet train. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what the... F- where's my swear drop? What the fuck, fuck, fuck is wrong with you? Uh, what? Oh my god. I How can you say clear. that? No! <laughs> and it wasn't? No! Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you oh had to make god. me pick, I think more people would like bullet oh train. Oh my god. Than people would no, like not body, a, body, not body. a chance. I think... I don't. Not I don't, only is Bullet Train weird, which limits your audience, it's also not good. It's Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. On the other hand, is a horror movie, big audience, and it's also good. Okay, my question to you. Considering that we saw both of them together, I'd like you to tell me, in terms of the general crowd, do people? Laugh I heard. More? I heard no laughs except for like three guys who were losing their shit. During Bullet Train, I heard more laughs in Bullet Train than I did in Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. That's also because we saw Bodies, Bodies, Bodies at twelve forty-five. We saw Bullet Train at like two forty-five. Two. Yeah. Yeah. On a Sunday. Yeah. Daytime movies on a Sunday much more popular than on a Saturday. Still. Theater in Bodies, Bodies, Bodies was not very full. I will say that, and I want to go see it late night with young people who are cool and will actually laugh. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not cool enough for this movie. So. Percentage wise. Laughs were higher in Bodies, Bodies, Bodies in terms of the audience. And if you're not cool enough for this movie, or you... You don't have to be cool. If you hate cool people, go see this movie. It's funny. That's why I'm laughing. Or if you simply just want to sit back and smoke some Aces. Aces light. See, you could just watch Smoke and Aces or Smoke and Aces 2. I could also just watch Screams 1 through 4. Mm. yeah yeah <laughs> see but this is what this is here's my thing this is what scream 5 should have been yeah i wish it was this because then i think it might have been more my speed yeah i think they needed to add a, a little more to the satire lean a little more into the comedy personally a little more into the self-awareness but overall i think bodies 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 miles 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 ahead of bullet train okay and i just i'm astounded that you disagree. I'm just trying to have a good time, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Just eat some popcorn. And watch bodies, bodies, bodies. Yeah, not be accused of uh, gaslighting somebody. <laughs> Once again, Nolan's gaslighting me into thinking that he liked Bullet Train in the theater more. And bodies, bodies, bodies. I did. <laughs> that's just a. I just. I just don't even see Put how that's possible. Put the polygraph on me next time. I don't even see how that's possible. Like, Bullet Train, the theater was dead, except for like three or four people, like the guy in front of us who was just losing his mind. Uh huh. And you know that guy wears Deadpool T-shirts to sleep, so I, like I don't really care about his opinion. I heard. I heard more than a little bit more than that, but maybe that was just perceptual. Maybe I just wanted to hear more. Percentage wise, I know I heard bodies, bodies, I know bodies. I heard more people laughing. Bodies, 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 bodies. I was sitting next to you. Yeah, me and the, the guy couple had, other the guys. Guy ahead of you. Couple other guys. I, there was one guy that. There was you, a couple people. As we came out, you noted. I wish I'm gonna go to a crowd where it's not just me and this other guy. Did you not say that? I did say that. You did say that okay. on record. Okay. Percentage wise, it's higher. We saw Bullet Train in a big theater, full theater. We saw bodies, bodies, bodies in a small theater with probably about like 15, 20 people in it. Mm-hmm. Two people. Yeah. That's a solid 10%. Sure. Were there 20 people laughing in the big theater for Bullet Train? No. Yeah, probably not. And yet, I was less annoyed. Did you laugh at any point? Except for, you know, the one part at the end. But, no, but I laughed harder at that part than... I laughed twice as hard at that part than anything about okay. Body. That's that's yeah. And that's definitely that was a true fantastic because... joke. That was I I lost it too. It yeah, was, it was hilarious. You were witness to this. You yes. can back that up. Yes. 
But like one joke does not a good movie make. But yeah, and neither does neither does a bunch of other ones apparently. Oh. Uh. Anyway, go see Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Don't listen to Nolan. You don't know what he's talking about. Or Bullet Train if you're not cool like me. Uh, Have fun. If you're not cool, you hate cool people, and you would like Bodies, Bodies, Bodies because it's making fun of them. So where do I fall again? I don't know, man. Exactly. I don't know. Yeah. Well, next, we have a movie that Nolan saw that I didn't see, and he's going to try to convince me to see it, which I honestly don't think is very likely. Because you're mad at me now? Well... (laughs) (laughs) I am just waiting to see how fucking, where's my thing, how fucking hypocritical you are going to be talking about, oh, go to see this movie, it's scary, but it's like stupid, but it's it's kind of good. And after you're done, just like taking a shit all over Bodies, 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 which is the best slasher of the year. Speaking of which, actually, before we move on, mm-hmm. we got to talk about the other slasher that's very, very of its time that came out this year, X. Oh, I was thinking they slashed them. You no. heard of that? No, I haven't. Well, we'll cover it later down the line. It's on okay. Peacock. Okay. All right. Um, but X is, a, I think, a very, very similar movie to Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Mm-hmm. And I enjoyed both of them, but, like, which one do you like more? The, the 70s X. porno aesthetic of X or the Gen Z glow stick aesthetic of Bodies, Bodies, Bodies? Um, I would say X. If you're asking me, do you want me to elaborate? Or yes, please I thought so. this was one please of the where we're going to cut out the rest of my response here. We X will, be- but just go ahead. X because it it capitalizes for longer on its initial promise. I think I still have a little quibble with the ultimate conclusions. Just a, I mean, just a little. Of X. Yeah, because it felt like some things were being set up that are not, having seen it twice now. Um, but it, even though grisly fates are awaiting almost every character he really goes the distance to try to develop some of them for that distance um and in particular in particular the bad guy i will say though Um, in in x when the killing starts the character development stops except for with one person which is the bad guy um that's true so it carries on from there. Again, I'm not sure it, it it nails it, but it tries it, and it continues with it. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm bodies, bodies, bodies all the way. I know, that was never the it gives me It gives me, like, that Uncut Gems vibe, where it's so specifically a year. Like, Uncut Gems is 2012. Yeah. And it feels like the most 2012 movie ever. It's yeah. like being transported back 10 years. Yeah. But... This movie feels 2022. Like, it, th- this is definitely happening somewhere. Like, this is a very, of its time, feels incredibly current movie. Yeah, I mean, probably I wouldn't want to be anywhere near that situation. Well, yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, I mean... And I don't, I don't think that there's anything that was, if that is a really interesting situation, I don't think that that was very genuinely explored okay we're just not we can't i mean i can't do this you asked i you, can't do this you, all right you went back to the site let's talk about resurrection let's hear let's hear your bullshit <laughs> twisty pretzel logic try to convince click me click that fucking clicker you said i did i clicked it oh, ahead of time yeah okay fine um okay so gage is gonna hate this movie so i'm gonna speak to no, the no 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 yeah. no 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 you told me i would like it I think you probably would like Okay, it. well, tell me why. Okay, so it's about uh, stars and is executive produced by Rebecca Hall, um, who is an English actress, um, who more recently, it seems like, I just could be from the last one that we saw, which was Nighthouse, it feels like she's been in a couple of these movies, and I'm not sure if it's just because she was in that one and it felt like it summed it up or something, but it just it feels like... Yeah, she seems like a person that would be in a kind of single lead horror movie that might not be as, like, uh, gory or something like that. Not elevated. Thriller. But conceptual. Yeah, yeah. Um, This was what The Night House was. And that's what this one was. So, um, in this, she plays a single mother 
of a daughter who's soon to be turning 18. They have a very, you know, good relationship. And she is a highly controlled, um, seems like a little bit repressed, uh, just kind of nondescript businesswoman, but, you know, really professional um, and all that kind of stuff. So that's where she starts. And little by little, starting with when she notices a guy who's just at a conference and it's never a very rarely does she s- a business conference yeah it's just like some biotech i mean her, all right her corporate maneuvers are not exactly integral or anything <laughs> like that um but she sees some guy and she clearly recognizes him and he gives her a pan and like gives her a panic attack um so from there we s- that's where the mystery starts who is this guy what does he want why is she starting to act so erratic why is her erraticism so specific um And what is her relationship with this guy? And I would say it goes down from there. What I like about it most is that it is a thriller or like a conceptual type of thriller that takes some really weird turns, genuinely weird turns, um, while also being pretty much all relationship-based her whole life because Rebecca Hall is in every frame. I mean, she dominates it. Um... Her whole life is evaluated by the strength of her relationships. And as those crumble, you can see what might might happen. So, that's Resurrection. Its conclusions, where it goes to, fucking weird. Real weird. And, like, I don't know how I feel about it, and I'm not exactly sure it's successful. And it's also not a note-perfect movie through to the end, but it's well done. It's well acted. It's got great music by Jim Williams. Um, Pretty decent script. Big How long con- is it? Good concept. It's like an hour forty-one. Okay. Yeah. Five hundred. And it's just sleep. It's it's like a cozy thriller. You know, it's just great. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Tim Roth I... is really creepy. Oh, really. Tim Roth is in yeah, it. Yeah, he plays less. The, he plays the mysterious man. All right, I'm there. It's really creepy. I love yeah. some Tim Roth. It's it's worth it for him. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're in. Yeah, I'm in. You Check just have out. to say Tim Roth. Oh shit. Yeah. Okay. That's, really, that's all you had to do. There you go. Resurrection. Check Resurrection. It out. After you see bodies, bodies, bodies. Sure. Now, guys, it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time for trivia. In this game, we're playing bullet trivia. I'm going to ask three questions about the high caliber rounds that kill everybody from Lincoln to Bin Laden. Bullets. If you get all three questions right, you could win the contents of tonight's swear jar, currently valued at 62 quarters. That's 1550. And that number only goes up. So if you want to play bullet trivia, you can go ahead and call in now. 713-367-1534. This is Deep Fake Kevin Harlan, and you are listening to Fuck It. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. Getting a call. Who could it be? Call we from not, it's just Jacqueline. Jacqueline. To accept, press one. Hello. Hi. Be ready to play bullet trivia? Yes, I will be losing this trivia game as well. <laughs> well, you know how it works at this point, Jacqueline. If you get all three of these questions right, you can win tonight's swear jar, which is currently at 62 quarters. That's 15.50. You ready? Yes, let's do it. All right, question number one. The term caliber refers to a bullet's A, speed, B, size, C, power. Ooh, okay. It's between size and power, for sure. I'm really tempted to look this up. Um, oh, what? Hey, yo. Size. You can't look it up. <laughs> no. Uh, so- I'll say size. Size? Yeah. Correct. In this case, size matters. You know I had to do that, Nolan. Mm-hmm. Okay, number yeah, two. You needed it. You're one for one. Wow. Oh, my God. She got you. I want to hang up. <laughs> Number two, the term for the powder in the bullet is what? 
A, sulfur, B, phosphate, C, cordite. Never heard of cordite. Sulfur is used in a lot of antibiotics. Um, that's just a factoid for tonight. I'm thinking... What was B? Phosphate. Let's say phosphate. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. <laughs> the answer was C, cordite. Okay. Well, that was I'm glad the one it's not answer sulfur. I couldn't make up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number three. Here we go. A 22 caliber bullet is often used in a rifle. What type of gun uses a 12 gauge round? A. Pistol. B. Shotgun. C. Rifle. This seems like a trick question. Hmm. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, this is just like I just I, I know nothing. <laughs> Every time you know nothing, Jon Snow. Um, I'll let's say a rifle again. Is that wrong? I'm sorry, Jacqueline. Once again, <laughs> incorrect. We were looking for B shotgun. You've gone one for oh. three tonight. I'm sorry. You get no prize. Going home empty-handed. Except for the warm, fuzzy feeling in your heart knowing that you called into the show and at least gave us somebody to ask these questions to. So thank you. And thank it's you. Pretty, it's, thank you. It's cool I don't know anything about guns. I mean, I should be like the spokesman for like gun control or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everybody that is in charge of gun legislation shouldn't know anything about guns. <laughs> I feel like they don't. <laughs> that's, a, that's another story. All right, Jacqueline, you have a good night. Thanks, you too. Bye. Bye. All right, well, that's all we have for you tonight. You can join us next week when we talk about two or three movies. We'll see. We have the new Predator movie called Prey. It's Dan Trachtenberg, director of 10 Cloverfield Lane, as well as Luck, the new animated movie on Apple+. Plus. And who knows, maybe we'll even see Fall, the movie about two people that are stuck really high up on a cell tower and slowly become deep fakes of themselves. That sounds like a pretty great show to me. I don't know. You'd have to tune in to find out. You can find us next Tuesday on Twitch at 11 p.m. Central Time. That's all we have for you tonight. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you next Tuesday. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching. We'll leave you with Sting and a cut off his new album. Take it away.